scholars of Islam. There are many scholars in Islam came during Prophet's time and after Prophet's time. So I picked up some of the history of some scholars so you can understand how this knowledge was was uh, saved, collected over time. That is I call it scholars of Islam. There are six authentic books, Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Daud, Tirmidhi, Nasai, Ibn Majah. These are six authentic books considered by Muslims around the world as authentic. In the same way, we have four Imams. One is Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Ibn Hanbal. Also, there are some other scholars came. I just picked a few of them. There are many, many scholars, many. I just picked a few of them. The reason being that I should know at least some of the scholars about their background. If possible, I should know each of them. But unfortunately, most of us do not know when you read the Hadith, we do not know who this person was, where he was, how he collected. So I have some background information, little information to show you. So these are some of them I added also, like Darimi, Behaqi, Tabrani, Ibn Hibban, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ghazali, Ibn Kasir. I stopped at Ibn Kasir because his tafsir is widely used as we speak today, as a very, very much a standard tafsir worldwide today. Just to give you some information how actually they came in this world, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, in the year 632, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam departed. After that, we have a line 700, 800, 900, 1000, 1100, 1200, 1300, 1400, regular English years. You can see these are the four Imams came. Imam Abu Hanifa came just around 700, in the year 700. Or in other words, after Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam departed, he is the one so closest to him came around 700. So, roughly within 70 years after Prophet ﷺ departed from the earth, he came to this world. And then he lived certain age, we will talk about it, each of them. Then we have Imam Malik, he is overlapping him. In other words, at the same time, Imam Abu Hanif was there, Imam Malik was there. And then Imam Shafi came when Malik was there. Then when Shafi was there, Ibn Himbal, Hib, 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 Ibn Hanbal came. So these are the four Imams who are, over, who are overlapping each other, as you can see. Or in other words, two of them always at the same time. They, they know, knew each other, they meet each other also, and they exchange information, ideas, and so many things. So this is the one block of four Imams, and they contributed a lot, so I am going to talk later. At the same way, we have these six books, Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawud, Tirmizi, Nesai, Ibn Majah. As you can see their lifespan, they came after 800, in the year 800, and most of them died before 900. And they are heavily overloaded and overlapping each other more than the Imams, as you can see. Because they are, they are more intense. They came a little later, about 100 years later, from 700 to 800. Now this is 800 to 900. As you can see, they uh, um, uh, heavily co um, uh, communicated with each other and their lifespan was almost overlapping, almost I would say, as you can see from these bars. Uh, they checked each other, they have a difference in opinion, they have a different way of collecting hadith, they, they recorded their difference in opinion, that's fine, but they thoroughly scrutinized, checked, all the hadiths and all the all the information about Islam, about about uh, Deen, about uh, hadiths and so forth. After that, we have scholars came here at the bottom. As you can see, Darimi came, then uh, Tabrani, then Ibn Hibban, Behaqi, Ghazali, Ibn Taymiyyah, and Ibn Kasir. So these are my end of my list. There are many more. There are many more in between. And then many more after that, till today, there are many, many scholars, but I just picked up, these are some of them, at least I should know about some of them. 
this is the details about each of the scholars. I am going to briefly describe about each of them because of the of the time and also limitations. So I am going to describe about each of them very briefly. Bukhari. First one is Bukhari. He was born in 810 Bukhara, Uzbekistan, and he also died near Bukhara, Samarkand. 870. Both are in Uzbekistan. So his lifespan was 60 years. He just lived 60 years. So this is the Imam Bukhari Masjid in Bukhara if you go there that is expanded, built, renovated as you can see it's a very big place and imagine in those days the Muslim population was so small and historians say that at any given time he had 100,000 students used to attend at a given time. This is uh, Imam Muslim, he is born in 820 in Nishapur in Iran and he died in 1875 in the same place. He lived only 55 years. This is Abu Daud. He was born in 1800, 817 in Sajistan, Afghanistan and he died in, in the year 889 in Basra, Iraq. He lived 72 years. He visited Basra, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Cairo and Syria. This is uh, Tirmidhi. He was born in 824 in Termez, Uzbekistan and he died in the year 892 also in the same place he lived 68 years this is Nasai he was born in 830 Nasai in Turkmenistan and he died in the year 915 in Jerusalem which is Palestine he lived 85 years this is about Ibn Maja he was born in 824 in Kazvin, Iran and he died in 887, also Kazvin in Iran. He lived 63 years. This is Imam Abu Hanifa. He was born in 699, as you can see. It is less than 70 years after Prophet ﷺ departed in Kufa in Iraq. And he died 765 in Baghdad. He lived only 66 years. And this is uh, Imam Abu Hanifa. As you can see, he was... Uh, Born in Kufa, and then he traveled Medina, Mecca, Egypt, and then back to Baghdad. That is the place of his grave today. And this is the Imam Abu Hanifa Masjid in Baghdad. It's a very uh, beautiful Masjid, but because of the recent war, as you can see, the minaret on the right side is uh, is damaged by the war, but the Masjid is there. This is uh, Imam Malik was born in 712 in Medina and he died at 795 in Medina also. He was, he lived 83 years. This is Imam Shafi. He was born in 765 in Gaza, Askalan, in which was Syria at that time. Now it is a part of Gaza, Palestine. And he died in the year 820 in uh, Egypt. He lived a 55 years, very young life. So what we learn from this scholar's lifestyle, their journeys, their struggle, their sufferings, whatever they did, whatever they accomplished, what can you do? First of all, we should see that their, these scholars show their dedication, struggle and sacrifice. They made a lot of sacrifice. They struggled a lot. They starved. They, they had gone through so much hardships. We cannot imagine. And they had no worldly desire except to preserve the words of Allah and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa to benefit mankind. This is very important. They were never connected with the worldly uh, fame or name or anything like that. They were never wanted to be connected with the rulers and kings so that they can, so that they will have to compromise with the actual sayings of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa So they were free, they were independent, they had their own business or some other profession, but they are more or less depend, independent. So they were able to collect and explain the knowledge, hadith, independently, without any bias, without being influenced by anybody. And that is the beauty of their activities, that they were never connected with anyone. So that whatever they did, it was purely for the pleasure of Allah. And they were overlapping each other for checks and balances. What I mean is that they lived almost similar kind of time frame, so they knew about each other, they knew about their activities, each other's activities, they are able to compare notes and uh, benefit from each other. 
most of them were around Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Egypt, Syria, Iran and Uzbekistan. And this is my important part of my presentation is that they analyzed the knowledge as much as possible and put everything in writing. 